they go doing me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm hooking them down. We turn the spots in the frowns. You can't hop out, then we clearing the You thought I was done? Oh my god. No. Oh yeah, it's me, A. Stephen Doe from the 9 O's. Oh, I love the energy. I love the energy. Okay. So, first of all, H. D. Bendo. Yes. That is very neat. Okay. Thank so, you. walk us through how you got this name. Where did this come from? Okay, okay, okay. So, H. D. comes from. So, my name is Darius Henry. Right. Okay. Why are you saying your full name? Bro, it, it, love that. I'm cool. Too. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's fine. Right. So, boom. I, I ended up on Facebook, I switched my name to Harrius Denry because like random people was adding me and was just talking to me like okay. they knew me and it was just kind of weird. Okay. So I switched it to Harrius Denry, so that's where the HD comes from. Okay. And then the Bendo comes from, um, this might have been like 2012, I said fuck the new artist title, HD Bendo, right? Okay. And then I needed a Twitter name, so I just put HD, HD. Bendo because of that. And then, just for search purposes, that's why I stuck. But the Bendo really is mm -hmm. because for me, I had to believe this shit before any of this happened. You know what I'm saying? Like at this point in my journey, you know what I mean? Like I'm I'm signed to rock and you know, people are paying attention. But like right. for me to even get here, it started with me in my bedroom. Like I had to believe this shit. Right. You get what I'm saying? So that's what that been the okay. means. It's a reminder. So it's like an affirmation. Yeah, for sure. That. for sure. So how did you start with it? Well, in your bedroom. Yeah, yeah. So for me, my first introduction, I'll say was fifty cent. Like that was Thing, like the person that made me want to rap. I was just stealing my brother's CDs and shit like that. And Why you put this ass in the bottom? Because I mean, as a kid, and it's just like, fuck that. It's, it's a lot more fun than being a little shakes. You know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly, as a kid. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I would take his CDs and I'd be listening to 50 all day, you know, okay. even from 50 to Camel, all these people. But 50 was my first introduction that made me want to rap. And then from there was Wayne. Uh, Wayne was like the reason, like, made me want to like play with words essentially yeah. you know what i'm saying and then cold once i found okay. cold it was like all right i want to get more introspective mm -hmm. and that was like the that's the like holy grail that kind of started my journey i think that it's crazy that you would say like exactly three artists too because on this card you see it said that we had to summarize your music using three artists who would pick it's Real? giving fortune teller yeah you know what i mean so we're in tune, that's all that is. We here. Yeah. It's the New York. It's the Brooklyn. Come on now. It's the Brooklyn. Where the Brooklyn are you from? The Brooklyn. Where do you think I'm from? The No. That's that is the other side of Brooklyn. Where you from? I'm from the side. Oh, okay. Nice. Where you from? Well, I don't know where you're from. Yeah, you exactly. Me. I'm from the nine O's, baby. Okay, people don't know what that is. What you mean? Every they do it they're from Brooklyn, but okay, not. I'm from they... the nine. I'm from I'm from East Flatbush. Yes, I, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm from the place where all the Grenadians and the Haitians. You know wow. what I'm saying? My family's That's, Grenadian. My family's Grenadian. We, we here. Grenadian. We like, here. We here. We here. You know, everybody in Grenada is related to each other. Everybody cousins. So, yeah, that I feel like that way about all of Grenada. Like Barbados, like that. Everybody cousins. Dead ass. So, what are you other than Grenadian? Oh, uh, it's my father's side of Jamaican. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing about Jamaicans, man, they are loud, proud. Not y'all good time. When I went to uh yeah, East Parkway on Liberty, yeah. I wanted to find a Jamaican flow. I was so mad. My friends wanted to keep listening to Soka. I'm like, I want to go with these Jamaicans <laughs> to be bent over on concrete. And hey, you didn't get that? No, oh, we just chipping down the road. <laughs> so, who else are some of your musical influences outside of your movie, girl? Outside of that, I would. I mean, definitely, you know, somebody like Hov mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Beyond that. People like Jack Johnson. Like I love the album okay. in between for me. I like writing. Like okay. that's that's the major thing. Like me as as an artist, like I'm big on, on writing. So like I just appreciate people that write really good songs. And that's one of the reasons. I mean, I know you said outside of the Holy Grail, but that's one of the reasons why Fifty is such it's a like mo like in terms of writing. Fifty yeah. is a very underrated writer, like songwriter. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's something I always take to. Right. What's the first song you ever wrote? Wow. First song I ever when wrote. When they came out or not? It was probably this song called Paper Chaser. It's a bad okay. song. It's a bad song. Yeah, it wasn't feeling How old were you? It's a 11, 12, maybe. Okay. It's a bad song. It's, <laughs> it's, it's nowhere on it. Did you record it? Yeah. Yeah, I was recording music. I was recording on, like, at that point, I was probably recording on my little laptop. Okay. I had this little, like, netbook. Okay. Yeah, 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 and I was recording off of that, and I would be recording at my homie CJ's house. Like, okay. that's kind of how we would just give shit like that. Too. Okay. Yeah. So, what's your favorite 
So you knew for a long time this was oh, it. This yeah, was yeah, yeah. For sure. When I was nine, mm -hmm. uh, my girlfriend's mom, right, we was at like this art exhibit, something right. like that. We showcasing my work. But she asked me what I wanted to be, and I told her I wanted to be a rapper. Very interesting. Like, I felt crazy. I'm not gonna lie. Like after I was like, why I tell this lady that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because. I think that that's something that has changed. Like, I feel like back then, yeah. like, if you said you wanted to be a rapper, everybody's looking at you like, what? Like, you want to right, be what? Right. If you said you wanted to be like some type of content creator, it was like, okay, well, what are the odds? I feel like now, everybody in the want to be a rapper. Yeah, I mean, we at the place now where you could be whatever you want because yeah. it's like, you just got to go get your audience. And it's like easier than it ever was if you find the audience. So. Definitely. Is rap the only thing that you write, or do you write like poetry and stuff too? Uh, no, nah, I mean, I'll be writing poetry. I look at the rapper's poems in itself, you know what I'm saying? Like, one thing that I'll be doing, I'll be going to little cafes and I'll, I'll be oh. re reciting my rhymes, but like as poems, okay. you know what I mean? Just strip the beat away. You, you ever watch, uh, what is that, that poetry jam? No. You never seen what Kanye did, All Falls Down? That shit mm. is so good. Kanye does All Falls Down, uh, DMX does this crazy poem about the industry, it's fire. Fun fact, I do not like, like, I like being at concerts, but I don't like listening to, like, live. Yes, I can't. Why? Um, I like it to sound how it does on the track. Like. <laughs> you don't like the feeling of, like, bass? You know if I'm that? there. Right, okay, okay. But, but if I'm watching like it there. on my TV, I feel like I can just go put the song. Copy, copy. I, I think you should at least try the Death Poetry Jam. I okay. think that's the name. I'll try listening to Kanye on that. It's, okay. it's just a different experience. Okay. So do you write all your music? Yeah, for sure. Every lyric? Every lyric. Love that. Every lyric. Would you ever have a ghostwriter? Nah, that's not really my, <laughs> my okay. plans. Okay. So I'm interested in your writing process because as you said, like, you're, well, first of all, you were listening to very skilled rappers. And I feel like it's one thing for you to be able to put words together, mm -hmm. but it's a whole other thing for you to be using like literary devices. And that's right. what you do. Like you in there with sure. the alliteration, the metaphor. So what is your writing process like? For me, like, oh, so when I get a beat, you know what I mean? I'll essentially just press record and okay. just come up with flow. Just find pockets. That's, that's my Are you saying thing. words or is it like a mumble? Nah, just mumbles. Okay. Like I'm just putting little flows together, trying to figure out what the pocket would be. Okay. And then, uh, through that process, is usually I'll find a hook through that, and once I find a hook, then it's like, okay, I know what I'm talking about for this record, so writing the verses kind of come out a little bit easier once I know what the direction of the record is. Okay, so subject matter still matters to you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I definitely feel like there's a lot of the time with music these days where it's like, the song is called one thing, and they talking about everything A through Z. Right, so, right, right. No, but I feel sure. like when you look at somebody like a Wayne or a Jay-Z, like, if the song is called Coke in the 80s, everything is going to be revolved around Coke. Yeah, no, 100% every single thing. Yeah. But, like, that's important, you know? Like, I, I feel like that in itself is a skill. Yeah. You know, when you're approaching a record, you kind of want to showcase your skill. Absolutely. Like, that's kind of what we're doing this for, you know? So, right. I try to make sure that's incorporated in every record. So, what do you feel like is your three strongest skills as a rapper? Flows, okay. lyrics, and beat selection. Flows, lyrics, beat selection. Yeah. Okay. What do you think is the most important from the Beat selection. Why? Because it's music. Music is about feeling, you know what I'm saying? The things that you're saying, don't get me wrong, as a writer, mm -hmm. you know, that that's almost sounds crazy as a writer to be able to not say lyrics are the most important. But yeah. I say beat selection because, as I said, music is about feeling. Mm -hmm. And what you're saying is extremely important, but in order for that to connect, Got people got to feel it. Right. You know what I'm saying? If people not feeling that music, yeah. you could be saying the most profound thing, but it's just a matter of, okay, cool. Nobody cares. Exactly. So, beat selection, is, I, I really uh, pride myself on picking beats that complement. So, how do you pick your beats? How do you know this beat is for me? I'm about to eat this up. I'm just, I'm just picky. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm, I'm a very picky person. I'm very okay with being patient. You know what I'm saying? Which like, I don't, I don't, I'm a Virgo. Okay. So I like I'm, I'm, I'm cool with being patient. So, you know, we'll be in the studio. There might be a time. I remember I was going through beat packs from maybe like a whole hour or so. Mm. No beats. Mm. No beat. But it was just like, if I'm not feeling it, you know what I mean? I'm not here to force it. You know what I mean? It's about feeling. That's what this music starts from. Feeling. So if I'm expecting people to feel something, if I ain't feeling anything, what yeah. can I expect from you? 
Okay, so trying to put it into words, what about a beat will grab you? It would be, does this, so me as a producer, right, a oh, lot of the times, too. yeah, I, okay. I, I come from the place of like, okay, do I wish I would have made this beat? You know what I'm saying? Like, if I, if I hear some shit, I'm like, damn, yo, I wish okay. I would have made that. Or I feel, how the fuck did yeah. you do this? If that, if those two things go off in my head, then I'm already wrapped into the beat. If I listen to the beat, I'm kind of like, okay, I can already see how this is done, mm -hmm. or, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't really impress me in that way, that's fine. But then at that point, now it's about the bounce. You know right. what I mean? If the bounce is grabbing that whatever. So, who are three of your favorite producers? Right now, Dizzy Banco is, okay. is that's just, I see you got the feature you too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. this is, he's, he's making me very proud. Like, okay. every time Diz sends me something, it's just like, wow, this is incredible. Um, you know that? Hit boy, I feel like he's somebody incredible, and somebody that I feel like it doesn't get the um, the, the widespread love, but somebody like Plus, he's from uh, my boys camp. Air I was about to ask, what song did he make? He made "Humble" for Kendrick, oh, uh, shit. "Formation" for Beyonce. Like mm. Plus is somebody that I, I feel like, obviously he's he's seasoned in this, you know what I mean, and has credits and all these things. But I feel like the name is just something that needs a lot more respect. Plus is yeah. incredible. So how do you feel about producer tags then? Because oh, you being it. a producer, and I also feel like, like even how you just had to tell me that plus produce those songs, yeah. but it's like, if a hit boy had produced souls, or if a hit maker had produced souls, we would have heard it and we would have known. Right, right. So how important do you feel like producer tags are? I mean, definitely in terms of branding, like that's yeah. all the producer tag is, is branding. And I feel right. like if you want people to recognize you and your work, you have to make sure your brand is is, is a um, you know a feasible brand, Absolutely. but somebody like Plus, it he might just be more you know okay with being in the background. Right. A, a lot of times producers are very okay with they choose that role for a reason. You know yeah. what I mean? Like a lot of producers be nice, like can come up with melodies, all that shit. But it's just like I'm choose this role for a reason. So I think Plus sits Depends in that space. You're right. Okay. He sits Do you have a producer tag? Nah, I don't. I Why don't. not? It's just more like, I always kept my beat making very like low key. I do it out of necessity, you know what I'm saying? Like me, everything that I do around music, like mm -hmm. from making my cover art to, you oh, know. Oh, wow. So uh, you're very hands on. Yeah, very, very hands on. And Brandon, I, I will say, shout out to Cole, because he did the, the cover art for what can they say. But oh, for cool. a lot of um, the, the um, work that I've done, you know, we edited videos, making cover art, mixing songs, all of that stuff, anything that, requires releasing music mm -hmm. today, I can do it. Okay. But I've done that just so that like I understand everybody's job. So now when I go get the experts, we can actually have a conversation. Right. I'm not going to people like, all right, here, just uh, do some magic. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, I can, under, we can speak the language. And when somebody comes to me and it's like, yo, this is gonna take this, I just like, all right, well, I understand what this really right. does take. You get what I'm saying? So I think that's important. If you wanna be an uh, artist, especially today, you, no. You gotta look at yourself as as a media company now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You're not just an artist in this day and age. You're, you're building a media company. You all have to make content. Like that's what we're doing right. all day. So you got to start looking at yourself like that. And part of you know being ahead of a, a company is understanding everybody's job. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You just need you don't need to be the best at everybody's job. You go yeah, hire the best, know. but yeah. you just need to know. You know what I mean? People can't bullshit you. Would you produce a song for yourself at this stage in your career, or do you feel like I'm just... Nah, 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 for sure. I've been making beats lately, too. Like, okay. I've I been getting up. That's what's something I always did, you know what I mean? Just get up and make beats. I haven't done it in a minute, but I just got back into the groove of that, like, within okay. the last two weeks. It's been really nice. What's your style of producing? Like, what are your beats like? It's, a lot of it is just real bouncy, you know what I'm saying? Okay. It, it all depends on what my mood is, you know what I mean? Sometimes I might like, start with some like, samples and mm -hmm. it, could, it could just vary off into whatever the mood is. But, okay, yeah. depends on the day. Yeah, exactly. Got it. Now, earlier you did mention Rock Nation. Yeah, for sure. So, let the people know, what's your relationship with Rock Nation? Oh yeah, I'm signed over there, you know what I mean? New member of the Rockefeller team. Yeah, we love that. Yeah, thank you. We love that. So, how did you and Rock Nation cross paths? So honestly, that's just off of the, the work that we put in this, this year, you know what I'm saying? Like, me and uh, Diz locked in top of this year okay. and put together this project, what can they say? And just off of the noise that we were making with that, mm -hmm. 
we were able to get in front of Rock, and they was just like, oh, okay, this is this is something. Right. You know what I mean? They seen exactly what we were trying to build, and they understood how big we're trying to take this. You know what I mean? Because okay. for me, the music isn't just about you know having something big within the city. We know that this is going to be something big for the city, but we're trying to take this global. You know, like that's that's the focus: is making this as big as it possibly can. Right. And Rock is with that. Is this a management deal, or are you like? Nah, I'm signed to the I'm signed to the label. You okay. know what I'm saying I'm, I'm waving my flat. I'm on the label. Okay, so what's the difference between the two? So management obviously just comes with specific management things. You know what I mean? I think working with the label is about having a specific vision and plan okay. from A to B. I think management comes from a place of all right, we're just here to set up plays. Okay. Signing to the label is we're here to set up the brand. You know right. what I'm saying? Before picture. So. Got it. Now, how has your career changed since you made this movie? It's, it's just been a lot more eyes. I feel like that's the biggest thing. You know, people, when they hear Rock Nation with my name, it's like, okay, cool. Like, people are a lot more willing to listen. And I yeah. feel like with that, it's dope because we know what we've got. You know, like, right. it's the same reason why Rock was even excited to attach their name to what we're doing. Is, right. You know, it, it's always dope to see people in real time, like, Definitely. really rock the music. Definitely. So another thing that was really dope was the Rock Nation Cypher. Word. So, and first of all, you were last. Did you know you were going last? <laughs> I didn't know I was going last, but that was dope. Okay, was it edited that way, or did you, like, nah, find well, out the yeah, deal? In, in recording, I went last as well. Okay. Yeah. So how did that feel? Was there some pressure there? Uh, no, nah, I mean, I feel like the biggest thing is just making sure that you get it out the way that, that you intended. Okay. Uh, that's that's the biggest pressure with any of those situations. It's not a matter of like the externals. The externals are gonna be whatever they're gonna be, but you, it's it's a matter of how I feel walking away from it. You know. Got it. Now walking away from it, but you said that's all. I'm gonna mess it up. What you said? You can't talk to me at 100 mil. That's what you said. You can't. Talk, you said you can talk to me now. Maybe. Yeah. But you can't talk to me at 100 mil. Realistic. So what three things are you buying first when you touch that? Wow, wow. I'm gonna give me a boat. Oh, sure. Okay. I'm going to get a plane. Okay. Yeah, you know I'm saying? And I'm going to get, like, a really, really, really cool dog. A dog? Yeah. Really cool dog. Um, like a cool ass dog. Like, what type of cool dog? Like, I probably like a sheep I want, like, a sheep That's a shih tzu and a... Yeah, and a food, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's sheep food. Yeah. And I'm going to name my dog Cheerio. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, why can't you get a sheep food now? I can, but you said it at 100 mil. This is what I'm doing at 100 mil. Yeah, but like, why you gotta wait till 100 mil? Because clearly, you got I the name picked to, out, the breed picked out. Like, this is, you clearly. I could go get a boat today, right? Technically, like, if there's a will, there's a way. I could go get a boat today, bro. Um. You Like, no, see, look, you already, uh, uh, no. <laughs> I, I could go get a boat today. Okay, no. Let me tell you what I think the difference is. Um, I think that you probably could go get a boat today. I break you. Probably could go get a plane today. Might break you. Right. I don't know if the sheep food's gonna break you or not. You never know. Don't count my pockets. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose not watching pockets at all. <laughs> but I just I don't understand why you can't go. This is a part of okay. the hundred that's, million. That's a dream. You know what I mean? That's a, dream. a boat, plane, sheep, cheerio. Cheerio. All right. I'm not even gonna get into name actually because. So, how does Rock Nation feel to you? Like, do you guys feel like a family, or do you feel like it's just like more of a label? Nah, I think that's the dope part about it. Is like they believe in okay. the legacy. Like that's me getting into music wasn't for some like I just want to be here for one album, one song. Yeah. Like it's about the legacy of music. You know what I mean? Everybody that I looked at, they have longevity. You know what I'm saying? So Rock believes in the legacy, and I feel like with that, you naturally have to believe yeah. in the long run. You get what I'm saying? Right. So it feels a lot more family oriented. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Have you met Jay Z yet? That's mm -hmm. the big question. Duh, duh. No? Okay, are you excited to? Do you plan on it? I like, mean I feel like when that when that's supposed to happen, it's gonna happen for sure. We got to see you at the Rock Nation brunch. That's what oh, yeah. you gotta be at the Rock Nation yeah. brunch. Yeah. With, yeah. So so you know, and everything with the waffles and the Come chicken on, and all of that. Hosted with Jay, that's what it got to be. Yeah. Now, did you meet Jada Kiss during the filming of the set? Oh yeah, yeah, nah, for sure. Jada was fire. Like, just okay. as a person, it was it was dope. Cause obviously, you know, growing up in New York, you hear Jada Kiss nonstop. Right. You remember when when, when Jada was doing the voiceovers at NTA? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me tell you. I went to school at Albany. Word. Um, I graduated last year. Uh-huh. So when I came back, like I wasn't on the trains as much because I had cars. So like when I was here, I was driving everywhere. There was no way that I needed to go on the trains. Yeah. So when I came back and I lived here again and I started listening to the train, I'm like, what the hell is I going think on that's here? So fire, yo. I think it's funny. <laughs> that's hilarious. But point of the matter is, yeah. Jada Kiss is a staple in New York culture. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So to meet him was just like, okay, this this is fire, you know? Right. But he was real funny and just real inviting, made that place just feel warm. And that was cool. Okay. <laughs> is he the same Jada that we see on TV? Jada is 100% Jay, like funny Jada. Like. And do he really laugh like that? Yes. <laughs> In conversation, <laughs> one, he one laughs thousand, like that. Jada be laughing like that. That's mad crazy. That's mad crazy. So. I know that you've been in a room with a couple of OGs at this point because you went to Hip Hop Awards, so we'll get to that. So, what's the best piece of advice that you've gotten from one of the OGs in Hip Hop Games so far? Wow. Um, so, this was years ago. Okay. Like, I, I met Jay Rude at Damage. Okay. Uh, this was in like 2015. And um, so, at this point, I was, I had this festival in Copenhagen or the Czech Republic, right? Okay. I did a festival out there, and he was just like, yo, you're going to go back to Brooklyn. And like you're gonna talk about your experiences, okay. and this is just your life at this point. It's like you're gonna get around people, you're gonna talk about your experiences, and you're gonna realize some people gonna think that you're lying or you're bragging. Which is like those are just people that just don't understand. That means it's time to get away. It's like damn. So it's something that like I, I always like took to that. You know? So why do you feel like that was the most important? Because honestly, I was expecting you to say something about like financial literacy or something like that. But that's real interesting that you feel like that. Like, that's the thing that you took. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like that, in in this shit, in this music shit especially, like, you need to have people around you that you can express yourself to. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's Even a lot that go realistically. Like, yeah. But it, you just need people around you that you can express yourself uh, to. So I feel like if the people around me, if I feel like I'm, I'm speaking to them and it's right. like, all right, he's looking at me this or uh, mm-hmm. you just keep talking about it. Yeah. You can't have that, but like, it's not a healthy environment, you know? So like that's something that just always stuck to me. It's like you gotta make sure that wherever you stand it gotta be healthy. That's super interesting. So who surrounded well, who do you surround yourself with? Oh yeah, that's my team, you know what I mean? Dude, that's my manager, okay. Nikki, my photographer, Vaughn, my DJ, Colin, my other manager, mm-hmm. Erickson does my video, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's like it's it's a whole team of people. Okay. You feel me? But yeah, you do what you gotta do. So in the friend circle, have you has your friend circle stayed the same or the lot of niggas you had to get away from? No, nah, I mean I think naturally in the in the process of it, you know, there's some people that everybody you, can't you have, yeah, exactly. Everybody can't go type of shit. But we, we definitely made sure to keep it super tight. Got it. And it's still like that. So I mentioned the hip hop awards that you were at. Tell yeah. us about that. That was a fire experience, more so because like I've been watching the awards. My mom really liked the red carpet and shit like that, mm-hmm. so she always used to watch that shit growing up. Okay. And then we'd just be watching the awards after. Yeah. So to be on an award show was like, oh shit. Like, you know, my mom actually watched that shit too, so it was a fire moment just in that. And then to see how it all goes down, like mm-hmm. the filming of it, all of that, was just like, oh, okay, like, this is cool, you know? So what shocked you the most about being here? Wow. Um, how much of a movie set it feels like. You know what I'm saying? Like everything feels like camera action. I think when on screen mm-hmm. uh it feels just like like this. It just feels like snap of a finger, but yeah. when you're there it's definitely a lot more of a production and you respect the work that goes into all of this. It's so much moving pieces. Yeah. You know, so I think that's the good part. So on the Joe Blaine podcast they were talking about how they felt like the Hip Hop Awards was real Atlanta this year. Mm. So you being from New York, did you get that vibe while you was out there? Like, did you feel like it was very much Atlanta based? I mean, not because I mean, I was excited to see Wu Tang perform. Like, and Fat they Jones ended the yeah, yeah. Fat Joe's host fan, Wu Tang perform. They ended with Wu Tang, uh, with loud records, but yeah. so many people from New York, obviously Wu Tang. Mm. But um, yeah, it, it didn't feel like super super Atlanta, but. Okay. I, for me, the highlight was, was Lil Brother, so it felt like that. That you know. is my girl. I love that. That was her. a highlight. I'm going to come out tonight. Well, her EP come out. I'm, I'm excited. Lil Brother. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, how do you feel about the girls overall since you brought her up? Uh, Are you feeling the girls right now? Yeah, 
hundred percent. I feel like it's a, it's a lot of fire music coming mm -hmm. out from women. Uh, Tia Ren, she got some fire. Tia Ren. Tia Corinne, I think that's her name. I'm a, I'm a familiar she got some fire. Freaky e. Tia, that's the name of the record. Okay. But yeah, it's, it's a lot of a lot of fire shit from okay. women. You know, Tracy Dash, she's on uh, my project. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, that's the first time I heard her. Actually. Word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she got she got a record called Daddy. That's crazy. Well. Okay. It's it's a lot of dope women that's like over Brooklyn. I'm not gonna lie. I think the women are dusting the men right now. <laughs> they they all we gotta keep up. That's I think saying. that the women are dusting the. I agree. Like as a whole. Uh, okay. As a whole. I think we look at women as a whole, we look at men as a whole. Uh, Especially me being from New York, so I'm watching the New York girls. I think they are smoking up. I mean I look at it like the first correction is, is an overcorrection always, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And I feel like that is necessary. Yeah. You feel me? Because in terms of women in abundance being in hip hop, mm -hmm. it's always been like kinda like I right, there's yeah. a couple women, but like now it's so many women that's actually prominent yeah. in that hip hop. So I feel like that's it's Different supposed types. to be like that, especially mm -hmm. you know what I mean, coming from where we come from. Yeah, is, this is necessary. Are you talking about the drill scene though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so who you feeling out of the the drill scene right now? Women and men. Okay, uh, Kenzo B. I like. I think she's super fly. Yeah. Um, I'm still crazy. I think Busy Banks still go like. I think so too. I, I'm. I'm Heavy on busy shit, um, and Eli Frost. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's an interesting name to bring up. Like, I feel like when you say, like, oh, you feeling right now, like, his name don't really come up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, hmm. like, I, I that's, fuck with Frost. Shout out That's lit. So, being from Brooklyn, I just want to ask you this real quick. Yeah. I feel like the Brooklyn drill, Bronx drill thing, like, that's a thing. Mm -hmm. So, who do you think got the better drill right now? Bronx drill or Brooklyn drill? I'm from Brooklyn, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I really feel like the energy is, is New York. That's the, the yeah. major thing. Like, even when uh, the Bronx drill scene was starting to emerge, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, that, that separation was happening, but I really feel like niggas really got to look at what New York is doing, you know what I mean? As yeah. a whole, like, especially how, you know, like a couple of weeks ago when, when Diddy was talking about like, how New York is in last, you know what I'm saying? Like, Yo, even, even that's that, on the last card. Come on now, like, I'm in tune, yo. I told you, right? But that's like right. how he's saying that, like I feel like even that that separation, you know, yeah. like alright, what's the difference? Bronx, you know what I mean, which mm -hmm. one's better? It's like, nah, we New York is, is there's a movement happening in New York and I feel like we gotta celebrate that because it's been a minute that we have this much. You yeah. Know? So, so we're gonna get back to the big thing a little later. Sure. But back to the division. Um, do you feel like New York is still being held back by that? Because like, you know, a lot of people will say like the reason New York isn't where Atlanta is right now is because like Atlanta they stick together like when they going through something we don't know mm -hmm. up here like they be having beef within themselves down right, there right, but like right. us we don't really uplift each other or like our DJs aren't playing all New York music the way you go if you go to California they right, play right. all Kendrick like do you feel like that's still a thing or you feel like everybody's I feel like at least in what we're doing, you know what I mean? I feel like the biggest thing is being the change that you want to see and yeah. how me and my side is moving. Like, we're very much like I, everybody's in tune with each other, you know what Period. I'm saying? Like, me and Diz, it's, it's Fergie, yeah. you know, Nico, Kai. There's so many people that's making music on our side that we all support each other. We all listen to right. each other. Up. So, I think even if that's not the conversation in New York right now, it will be. So, that's Period. what we focus on. Love that. So we're gonna lighten it a little bit, play a little game, okay. rapid fire questions. I like games. Okay. All right. I like games too. They be mad at me here. Yeah, I always wanna play a game. Okay, so we're gonna play a game of rapid fire questions. Let the people know you a little bit better, okay? Okay. There's no tapping out. Every question must be answered. Alright. Alright. What's your favorite Jay-Z song? Ooh, um Where I'm from. Who's your favorite rapper from Brooklyn? Jay. Like Tuna, you in Jay. Excluding me, Jay. Wow. Uh, okay. How many push-ups can you do in a row? If you about to tell me to do something, it's not happening. I'm not. Oh, that just sounds like you lying. You lying because you got to do it. I'm not lying. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> what TV show can you watch over and over again? Ooh, my wife and kids. That is my favorite TV show of all time. Wow. What's your favorite song by you? Um, damn. Madman right now. Okay. Who's the last person you pulled? Um, what was your first cell phone? Um, the little 
shit, it was a Nokia joint. It wasn't a flip joint. It was, you know, just... The slot it, it, Nah, it wasn't even a slot. Just buttons right on the joint. It was thick? Not even super thick. It was just like a little small phone. Buttons right on it. It was blue and it had a little gray antenna. Okay, so what's one song you love that everybody hates? Ooh, that I love. Come back to that. Oh, that's not really how rapid fire questions work. Let's wrap it. That's, um, that's good. You're not even going that fast. Listen, <laughs> just chill. Go to the front. <laughs> Which family member are you closest to? Uh, my cousin. What's your favorite thing to watch on YouTube? Random documentaries. Okay. Yeah. And last one, give us an unpopular opinion about anything. Unpopular opinion about anything. The seafood spots have the best wings. Like if a spot is known for seafood, they wings is phenomenal. I don't think I've ever had a seafood spot in my life. Look, I just put you yeah, on. I'm a, I'm a, You're gonna be in the next seafood spot. Yo, let me get the wings. Facts. Oh, okay. okay. Bitches boss. I live by um Ocean Kings. So I'm Ocean, gonna have to, okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get into that. So do you watch uh the JPP? Joe Bunny yeah, Podcast? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you a regular watcher? Yeah. All right, so I saw you post about hearts. Facts. And you played the song as a sleeper. How did that feel? That was cool. That was very, very cool. So, um, you know, parts, me and him spoke a little bit because Alex was over there. Okay. You know, we know him, but also Erickson, who shoots my video. Wait, you said Erickson? Erickson. When the cameras come off, I'm going to actually say Erickson. See, I wasn't even going to say that all here, but like, as I said it, I said Alex, and I was like, I can't say Alex and not mention E. But yeah, so that's the same Erickson. Okay. So that's how uh, me and Parks link, you know what I mean? And I played in the project, and it was probably maybe like, a month or so after, you know what I mean? Like on his report, so that was dope. But That's it felt really, really dope. Did you see like any like spikes in your streams after that? Uh, I didn't really pay too close attention to the numbers. Like okay. I, I'll be honest, I'm Do you? I'm a feeling guy. You know what I mean? Okay. I pay attention to the numbers in the sense of like, okay, I just need to know did it go up, did it go down, yeah. like that type shit. But like for me, it's you, you get the feeling. I feel like as an artist. You kind of know when people is rocking with you. You know when it's quiet. You know. You know. Okay. You, you got to pay attention. So when you're picking your songs, like this yeah. is gonna be my single. Mm -hmm. You feel like you use that intuition, like you know. What's oh yeah, go one million percent. Are you always right? I would like to think so. I mean, I wouldn't. You wouldn't be able to tell if I was wrong. I, I made the decisions. You know what I mean? And it's like I feel like however they land is wherever they land. I feel like that's the biggest thing in this journey. You know, is, is Choosing the decisions that make the most sense for that moment and then taking what you can and learning from that, making yeah. yourself better. That's what we represent lab, right? Like, it's learn to become better. That's my own team. Hey. So Wow, that's actually my initials. Word? Mm -hmm. Lab. Lab? Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about performing. You have a whole lot of energy on stage. I watched you at Rolling Loud. So how did that feel to perform at Rolling Loud? Rolling Loud was amazing. That was like one of them feelings that was like, do a lot of this work for these mm -hmm. types of moments. I mean, obviously, it's for any of these moments to be able to express yourself in front of people, but yeah. definitely on those types of stages, you know, it comes with a, with a lot of weight. So that was a fire moment in that, and mm -hmm. you know, being able to make those connections with you know a couple of people out there was a fire moment. Did you feel nervous? Well, do you feel nervous when you perform? Nah, performing is probably the most comfortable I am. You know what I'm saying? Like that's mm -hmm. me. I let all this shit go. It don't even matter what mm -hmm. happens up there. Like, right. you know, I'm good at it. That's interesting. I danced for 20 years, literally. I've been dancing since I was three. Every single time I stepped on that stage, I like had to pee right before. For I real? Danced. Yeah. And I feel like it's so much harder as a performer, like, because you're rapping your lyrics and you're live. Yeah. You're not even mm -hmm. using the backing track. So it's like you're rapping, you be jumping around, you be running from side to side. Good like, ass Tom. <laughs> I don't know how you do that. <laughs> I'll be up there having a good ass time. That's really what it is. But I mean, I feel like naturally, I can't say I've never like had nerves before mm -hmm. a show or something like that. I've definitely had that. But I think even in those, once I'm up there in front of people, it's like, okay, they go to uh, it's, you're here now. Like, yeah. What's up? How do you prepare for those type of shows? I've been doing shows for like so long that mm -hmm. the preparation is a lot in like listening to the songs, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, beforehand. But it's really allowing myself to be my most comfortable, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
quiet as much noise in your head as possible, that's the best way to prepare it. Like if you see me before a show, I'm probably gonna be super quiet. Like maybe yourself. like five minutes before. You know what I mean? Okay. Like I gotta take that time. Just quiet all this shit because once you up there, it's right. just you. So what about physically? Because I would imagine it's not easy to jump up and down like that. You don't even just be like hopping. Like your knees be there. Like, yeah. So how are you prepared to say all the lyrics? And I know you said you listen, but like say all the lyrics at the same time as you giving all that energy and running and jumping. As I said, since it's like me, just my most comfortable, it just fit like it's, I'm just going. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. You said what? Adrenaline. Content. Yeah, exactly. That's what he's, okay. I was just about to say. It's like it feels, it's almost like being blacked out. Like Got I'm it. not, but it's like that same feeling. Got it. Yeah. Now on your Instagram, right? Uh -huh. I was looking. Okay. And I saw no, it's nothing crazy. Uh, I was like, what's on your Instagram? <laughs> no, bro? I saw that you were outside advertising for your show at Metalhead. Yeah. Right. And I thought that that concept was so lit to get like just regular people to be like, yeah, like I'm popping out to the show. Sure. Whose idea was that? That's nice. That's what we do. So when I I went on tour with Portugal the Man okay, in that's lit. 2017, mm -hmm. right? And what I used to do would just be I would go in the line. Me and my my drummer Dirt, we would just be in the line, just essentially trying to scout tickets from people. Okay. But you know, obviously we're performing, but we yeah. just be up there trying to get tickets from people. And the whole thing was like, once we get on stage, it's like, oh, mm -hmm. these are guys trying to get tickets. So we just used to do dumb shit like that all the time. So now it's just putting it on. So I know you said that you're very hands-on in everything on the music side. How hands-on are you in like your imaging and your marketing? Oh, very, very hands-on. I mean, like my biggest thing is being able to get product out. Okay. Like today, tomorrow, whenever mm -hmm. I can get this music out, I can get everything around what it takes to put out a song in this day and age, put out a project, put out anything music-related in this day and age. We can do it in house. Okay, so how has being okay, how has being signed changed that for you? Because I would imagine like as an independent artist, you do whatever you want, whenever you want, but right. now that you're signed, like you have certain parameters. Right, right. I think those processes are like it makes things uh, a little bit like things take a little more time, but okay. the part of that is making sure that things connect. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like taking that time to all right, hold on. We look at it from all different angles before we just go. Because I think that's the biggest thing with being independent is all right, just go, go, go. Right. Which is good. Like, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But the, the other end of that is taking the, that extra three minutes to look at it and be like, all right, mm -hmm. we can amplify this in this way. You know, okay. and making sure that things explode. Now, with that mindset, it sounds like a lot of trial and error would be involved, mm. right? I feel like the, yeah, I, I think naturally putting out anything, any sort of content is trial and error. That's all yeah. we're doing. Every day we putting That's out right shit right. on Instagram. That picture got 50 likes, this one yeah. got 200, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. everything's trial and error in this day and age. So how do you deal with the failures? That's, I feel like that's the, the exciting part because again, my, my whole thing is live, right? Learning to become better. So right. It's time to learn. When yeah. we oh shit, that, that was a little off. Oh, we thought it was gonna go like that. It went like this. Okay, cool. Well, how are we gonna approach it for the next time? That's the exciting part, you know. Right. Like when, you, when it's time to start planning, like, mm -hmm. we get excited. Got it. Now I saw a video of you on YouTube. And it was on Double XL mm -hmm. talking about why you should be on the 2020 uh, freshman class, yeah. and then you weren't. Uh -huh. So how did you feel with that? Like, did you feel like that was one of those learning experiences? Nah, I mean, I feel like in those situations, like the idea of trying to get people to like, I need you to believe in this. Uh -huh. For me, again, my name is H.D. Ben Dirk. Like, it started from me believing in it. You yeah. get what I'm saying? So anything that is me, like, I need you to believe, uh -huh. it already started here. So like. That's external shit. You get what yeah. I'm saying? Like, people gonna catch it when they supposed to. Yeah. And you actually said that in the video. I was gonna bring that up. Yeah. Even in the video, you was like, you know, y'all want me to try to convince y'all, and like, either you gonna like it or you don't. That's the reality. And I think that's very bold of you to have, like, as a, well, you're not a new artist because you've been doing it a long time, right, but you right. just newly got introduced to a larger audience. Sure. So for you to just now have stepped into that position and just feel like, if you fuck with me, you fuck with me, if you're not, if you're not, like, that's so bold. I mean, it's just the reality, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I ain't here to run from the real, you yeah. know? Like, 
this shit don't stop what I'm doing, you know, like everybody doing right. whatever they doing, it don't stop what I'm doing. I'ma do right. me regardless. First of all, it's so funny to me that you say stop. Because that's just mad New York. You said it <laughs> earlier and I was like, wow. That's I cool. ain't even noticed that. Yeah, I feel like you just put that on. You was like, it's not going to stop what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why you putting the eyes? Now, you feel like that attitude came from you being from New York and being from Brooklyn? Or you feel like it came from like personal experiences? Yeah, I feel like the, it's just resilience. You know, I, I said I was nine, right? Yeah. Like, I told, I told her that I wanted to be a rapper at nine. So, yeah. like, you to have that, that, yeah, to have that mindset at that age and still be at it, it's, it's very much like I, I know what I'm mm-hmm. there for, you know? Where do you get your confidence from? Wow. God. Oh, there's no inspirational nothing after that. It's God. Period. God did. <laughs> Are you only child? Nah, I got a brother. I got, I got a brother on my mom's side and I got siblings on my dad's side. Okay, because I ask that because I feel like a lot of the time when people tend to be that confident, it's from the home. Like, mm. your parents or whoever you grew up with always telling you, like, you're this and you're great and you're beautiful and you can do whatever mm. you want. So. I mean, my mom gave me the space to kind of just be me. You know, okay. like, she didn't, she didn't really put too much restraints. It was like, all right, as long as you're doing good in school, mm-hmm. then I ain't really tripping on what you're doing. So with that, I feel like I was able to just find myself. Okay, so did she give you that same space when you decided that rapping was what you wanted to do full time? At first, it was naturally kind of like, damn, you want to rap, bro? Mm-hmm. Like, my mom from the Caribbean, you get what I'm saying? So, yeah, hey, you feel me? Like, mm-hmm. what are you doing? But mm-hmm. it was one of those things, like, she knew she couldn't really fight against it because the, the mindset that I have is determined, like, and, and I'm like, I'm a little defiant, I ain't gonna lie, okay. you feel me? So, she kind of just didn't really uh, go against it too much, and especially once I started going to Europe and shit like that, mm-hmm. it was like, alright, like, something, somebody gives you a fuck enough for you, yeah. for the, you know, you to get out there, so she kind of backed up at that point. Does she listen to your music? Nah, I don't really... Oh, no, I was gonna ask you how you feel about that because yeah. you be talking about bitches and oh, that's crazy. Hold oh, on, I don't got talk about very civilized things. You know what I'm saying? Talk about my um, life. I think that there's a very civilized way to talk about bitches at home. I just be talking about my life anyway. Like my mom. And is that's your life thing. My life is very civilized. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> okay, that's so why you don't want your mother listening to that civilization? Cause my mom not. She like Johnny Cash. You know what I'm saying? My mom okay. like country music, okay. soul music. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's what, that's what my mom is. So. so do you play her your music at all? Nah, I played my mom a song mad long ago. I made a song for her. Nah, that's nice. Yeah, I played that for her. Who do you play your music for? Me. To like, okay, to see reactions, to read the Uh, Definitely my manager, Drew. Play okay. for him. Uh, play for people like this. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, people around us, for sure. Okay. Now, I feel like... Who? Zay. Um, Okay. So just your innocence. Yeah, exactly. Right. Now I feel like in 2022, we touched on this a little bit, how like anybody can be anything they want to be. Mm-hmm. So I feel like a lot of the time, um, people rap either because they see the money or because like they just feel like, all right, I feel like rapping. Mm-hmm. So do you feel like, well, no, you said you've been doing it since you was nine. So clearly you have a love for it. But do you feel like there's a separation in artists that do it because like for the love? Mm-hmm. well versus you know the other side yeah i mean i feel like the separation is just going to be the resilience you know like because okay. naturally with anything that you're doing in life just gonna come with some bumps and bruises yeah. and you know what happens what you do after you get the bumps and bruises that's where you know where we tell where you're actually at with this shit. you feel me and that's the biggest difference you, you're gonna see some people that's just like i'm here to get in get out and that's fine and you don't have people that's in it for the long haul, that's fine too, you know what I mean? It's all a matter of what you want out of this shit. This life is for you. Yeah. You get what you want. Now, you being a rapper from Brooklyn with that mindset, um, do you feel like you're the best out? I, I got a song called Best Out. I didn't say you're the best out. Oh, okay. I, I, I didn't know you did that much research, you know what I'm saying? I said best out? You didn't see the best I, <clears throat> out? My fault. My fault. I'll see. You got that. Take them up. <laughs> she got it. Okay. Yes. No. I'm 1,000%. You know what I'm saying? Best out is, you know, I made that record from the real quick. 
Okay. From a very, very real place. Like when I made that beat, that was I had a different hook to it, and I was like, okay, we're gonna go with this. Like, I, I feel I feel like this could be bigger. This could be more of a statement, and you know, once I came up with that that tone mm -hmm. and that hookup, which is that's the thing I'm most proud of in that record is the tone. And the, the hook, okay. You know. Now, with you feeling like you're the best out, yeah. What do you think makes you the best out? Because it's me. You feel right. me? It's, it's exactly like right. it's it's something of like even in the music that I just made, right? This mm -hmm. project, what can they say? It comes from this place of back against the wall. What you going through? You know what I'm saying? Like for me, I feel like there's plenty of people that get to this situation. It's like, I right, what the world right. did this yeah. and. Ah, oh, y'all gotta get the where we come from is oh, all right. That's what y'all doing. Bet. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Like we get to it. That's right. that's what we come from. So it's it's a matter of the the resilience is just different. You know what I mean? What we, what we after is very different. Said a hundred million. The after Period. I think the word of the interview was resilient. For sure. Sesame Street. <clears throat> <it's a throat> yeah. Let's go with that. So do you see yourself doing anything outside of music? Oh yeah, for sure. What are you running into? So, you know, I, I really, you know, as I said, I started this shit looking at 50, right? Mm -hmm. What 50 is doing in terms of TV in general which is, is amazing. Okay. And that's definitely a path that at some point we're going to explore. Okay. You know what I'm saying? What type of, well, if you want to get it out right now. What type of TV do we want to get into? Like, you're trying to go to 50 route with the crime? You know? Nah, it's, it's a lot of stories, you know what I'm saying? I definitely would say, you know, I, I'm from the nine, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So it's a lot of stories that uh, we need to be able to tell from there. But also, you know, every day we just be outside laughing. Like, it's okay. just a lot of shit that we can, exactly. you know, exactly, exactly. So it's, it's going to be a lot of things. So outside of TV and film, do you see yourself going into anything else or just music? Definitely those things like as as my major priority, but you know, eventually we we want lab furniture. You know what I'm saying? Okay. We, we going anything creative, global. Yeah. Period. Now speaking about your main priority, what can they say? Yes. Dropped. What is the reception? Like? It's been beautiful. Like the thing about this project, we wanted to make something that was like bite side and. By size and something that people can just loop, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, okay this is him. I I can get it and I can go spread it to the, 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 a bunch of people and they can all get it. Mm -hmm. And that's been the biggest response. Like seeing people be like, "Oh, yo, this is I can I can just run this project nonstop." Yeah, that's been cool. So I, I feel really good about how people are reacting to the music. Mamba has been a standout right now. Yeah, Madman been another you know, creeping up behind. Him. So, okay. I'm excited. Now, how do you go about picking your track list? Like, how many songs did you have to pick out from? It wasn't too many that we picked from. Like, uh, we had a lot of records that's kind of outside of this project, but this project was very specific. There might have been like one or two records that I was going to put on here that I decided not to. But mm -hmm. it, it was very intentional. Very okay. Project. Got it. I was going to ask about intention because. When you go into writing your your song or picking a track list or deciding what's the message for this specific song, this specific album, um, do you, like, what is the intention? That's the question. What is the intention? It's most, like, in terms of the music, it starts with what do you want people to feel or, like, what are you feeling as mm -hmm. in that moment, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. if I play a beat, is what is that be saying to me? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because if the communication is all between me and the music, then the communication is going to be all between me and the people. Right. This shit is just communication. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And That's it's like it's like having your friends and shit like that. It, it could be just one little thing, and now y'all have off in communication just because oh you didn't ask me yeah. this. You feel me? Like yeah. that's how I look at the approach to music. All the communication has to be aligned. Got it. Now, what made you lock in with Earl on the beat? That was just something that I really wanted to do because Earl is just a name that you know has been around. I've been yeah. hearing how much shit that he's been doing for Yachty. Like mm -hmm. he's just been killing it. So I kind of just reached out and was surprised that he was even was. down to work. You know yeah. what I mean? And we went down to Atlanta, cooked up some records, and 
did you know, those uh, four records on that project. Now, as somebody that has worked with predominantly one producer, right, but then you've also worked with multiple producers on a project, um, what do you feel like is more beneficial for an artist, to lock in with one producer or to explore different sounds on one project? I feel like locking in with a producer allows people to be brought into a world. Mm -hmm. You know, and I feel like, especially with music these days, mm -hmm. there's so much coming out that uh, once you can bring people into the world, you can kind of stop people mm -hmm. for a little bit. Once you, all right, look, this is where you're at right now, yeah. and then you're transported. So I feel like that's the, the benefit of working with one producer. That was a really good way to explain it. I definitely feel that way. Um, when I wrote that question, I was thinking more about um, how Nas. I feel like Nas was... I mean, he's not, so he's always mm -hmm. gonna be successful. But like before him and uh, Hit Boy got together, I feel like he was kind of searching for mm -hmm. like where does Nas fit in present day. And I feel like once him and Hit Boy got together, it was like perfect. yeah, yeah, it's cohesive. Yeah. Everything about it was just like yeah, that's, that's the sound. Definitely a world. Yeah, exactly. Really, really, really interesting. So what's next for HB Bindo? Oh wow, it's it's a lot of music, a okay. lot of music. That's that's the name of the game that we have right now. I have a lot of records that I'm excited about, okay. so we just want to keep this music coming, but obviously pushing the records that's out right now. Mm -hmm. I feel like Mamba is an incredible record that Definitely. has global potential. Mm -hmm. It's one of those records that I, I truly believe is going to be something for the city, yeah. you know, like on, on a major level. So we just want to make sure that we get it to that place. So we're going to be pushing that record the whole time, but right. keeping these, these records coming Still recorded. Go straight, Mamba, y'all. Oh yeah. Listen Any to the whole project. You know what I mean? Whole project. What, what can, can they, they say? I don't know. What can they say? What can they say? So any collabs on the way? Oh yeah, yeah. Eventually, you know what I mean. That's that's in the works and things like that. But right now, we the records I got is me and the, the, the people. You know what I mean? That I'm with. So his is on there, of course. Mm -hmm. We got we got a special record. I, I'll give you the exclusive. Talk to the town team. Me, Biz, okay. and Don Q. Ooh. It's a special record. That shit's hard. And that nigga be snapping. It's a special record. <laughs> okay. It's good. When can we expect a full length project? See, that's the thing. Right now, I'm in the space of building up the equity. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, I want people to be excited for that full length project. Uh -huh. You know, so we're going to give you these, these bite sized projects and, and build up that anticipation. But we got a lot of music coming. Just, just know that. Got it. Alright, so tell the people I'm gonna find you. You can find me everywhere. H Steven Dope. It's H Steven Dope from the Nano. It's everything been dope. Everything lab, everything peachy. It's violation. It's lab. It's the rock, you bastards. <laughs> the bastards takes me out. Alright, y'all. I'm Lauren Kane, Tokyo Town. We out.